Welcome to The Rant. I'm your host, Herman James, and on today's episode, Russell and I will be talking about holiday party etiquette. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. That's how I'm able to uh, get this podcast across the country and across the waters internationally now. I want to give a big uh, shout out to the guys on Eastern Europe. For some reason, I'm getting a crap ton of downloads over there. It could be some random bot spyware. It could be Putin. Uh, Putin does some weird shit. Shirtless horseback riding, but... Yeah, I appreciate you guys sharing me, and I appreciate the feedback we've been getting on uh, the website, thehermanjames.com, and and our email for the rant with hermanjames at gmail.com. Today, we've got Russell. Russell, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good. Uh, Russell is just getting back from uh, running people over and hitting people with cars because he likes to drive and watch porn at the same time. It's kind of his thing. A little bit. Yeah, as long as the screen's up and it's on the dashboard, right? I mean, it's hands-free. They say your hands have to be free from a cell phone, but not the Johnson. You're good with that, right? No, I just rub it up against the steering wheel. <laughs> yes, look who's driving. How low does the steering wheel have to be to get that to actually work? I just put the seat all the way up. <laughs> couple to, phone books. couple phone books. You have the ass warmers too, don't you? So you have like a hot ass and then you're just rubbing the steering wheel on your dick? Yep. That's a weird combination. There's, there's got to be a video of that too. Like people, I guarantee, will be doing that. No, I still on... can't feel my pinky, so I can kind of give myself a stranger anytime <laughs> I want. Did it get like stuck in like the butthole and like you like lost feeling or what? Lost. I don't know what happened, but it's it's doing it. <laughs> it's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we've got the idea and the topic of holiday party etiquette. The thing I like the most about Christmas isn't actually Christmas. I couldn't give two shits about Christmas. It's not my favorite. I'm not a Scrooge. I'm not a Grinch about it. I'm just I'm just not there for it. It's just not my thing. But my favorite thing about Christmas and the holiday is the Christmas parties because everyone gets together. Everyone is having fun, having a good time. You buy one gift, you could bring an okay gift. And if it's like a white elephant or a gift exchange, you could leave with something better than you brought. Or you can royally screw someone over on purpose to make sure they get absolutely nothing. It's fun. You throw in a little bit of booze and some food and it's a good day. I think the best ones we've had are uh, co-workers of ours came over and uh, they were drinking with us at a Christmas party a few years back with our roommates. And then our roommate's friend came over and ended up sleeping with my co-worker in her car in front of our house at a Christmas party. And then because we were all grown-ups and adults, we decided the best action would be to watch them from inside the house out of the roommate's window and then put laser pointers on their asses while they're fucking in the car. Logical. Seems like a good idea. Yeah. It wasn't Russell. It definitely was not Russell. Not that he couldn't, but he... No, he probably couldn't. Nah. Nah. <laughs> but... <It's> in public. <laughs> in public. Well, I mean, it was across you from a park. So the worst that could happen is you just can't be in a park anymore near children with like uh, 500 yards. Is that, what, is that what it normally is? That's not a good... That's like a... Is that a kid's park? Yeah. I thought it was just like a bunch of grass field. There's not a playground there, is there? Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Playground. There's a picnic bench. Everything else, yeah. I have been there plenty of times over the years. I've never noticed a playground. <laughs> yeah, I we took around to here at the new place, but yeah. Well, this is like a nice, fancier one. Like it's like a pseudo gated neighborhood. There was slide and swings over there. There totally was. No, they're fine. Uh, yeah, totally was slide and swing. Yeah, we used to put Lucy on them. She would go up and down the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she like it? Oh, she loved it. She would run down the slide and then she'd try to run back up the slide and do it again. Uh, that, was, that was fun times over there. I don't have kids, so let the dogs do it. Miss that place. That was a good day. Um, the fun part about the holiday parties is everyone getting together. I mean, you get together with people you don't like anyway, and these this time you get to pick and choose. It's not like a a family required get together. Like you don't have to travel far to go spend time with your family that you didn't want to be with in the first place, or have to go to you know your 
uh, in-laws houses you know you don't want to be traveling across the country to go see your mother-in-law that you've only seen twice and every time you see her she talks about your significant other's ex-boyfriend or girlfriend and how much better they are than you i mean that sounds like what people would i don't know it just sounds miserable but in light of all that you also have people that don't know proper etiquette and by proper etiquette, I'm not talking we'll dress up in coat and tails and do some Gatsby kind of fucking part. That would be a cool Christmas party now I think about it. Have a great Gatsby kind of thing. Have tuxedos and little old school Marie Antoinette champagne glasses. I mean, it's been done before. It has, but what what one of our friends has the money to rent a tuxedo for a holiday party for shits and giggles? Maybe shirt tuxedos. Shirt tuxedos. I think shirt tuxedos might be... Ten dollars less than renting a tuxedo, like twenty five or thirty bucks. You can rent a tux for like forty. Not about those t shirt tuxedos. Yeah, yeah, but you have to, the actual t shirt tuxedo. I think it's like twenty five dollars. Oh, it's a fucking printout one. It's like ten. Like ten dollars. <laughs> Just get a white undershirt and like sharpie the black lines on it. So I wanted to do that to this one dude that was in the fraternity. <laughs> He had a onesie of fur, man. I was like, dude, get him drunk and just shave a fucking tuxedo into him. It'd be fucking hilarious. Literally, just a onesie of fur. It was fucking weird, man. I don't know how. Oh, fucking A. Cincinnati bow ties coming out. That's weird. I'm not artistic about it, too. You just see, like, your roommate's beard trimmer. Like, trim the guy up. Yeah, just- your roommate comes in like, what are you doing? Like, don't wake him. Quiet. Shh. <laughs> I'm looking fly as fuck for formal. Just take that. It's where that. <laughs> we shaved some fucking coattails on your ass, too. It's okay. Don't worry about it. But you got people that don't know the proper way of doing things when it comes to being at a, someone else's house for a party. Now, in terms of this, I, I'm talking about when you have potluck parties if it's in your office or if it's at your home, I break the rules of potlucks all the time. And it's only because when I go to someone's house, I don't like being told what I'm supposed to bring because if there's only a few things left on the menu, like, Oh, someone needs to bring onions. I'm not going to sit here and chop fucking onions for 30 minutes and cry like a little bitch just to bring onions over that no one's going to use anyway, because that was the last thing on the sign up sheet to do. If you're going to have a holiday party and you don't want people being pissed off at what they have to bring, just say, Hey, I'm thinking we do a Mexican food style potluck. Bring something Mexican E. I don't care if it's taquitos or tequila. Like it still works. Mexican-y. Just Mexican E. Well, cause fucking white Mexican. <laughs> like, I'm not making flautas. I'm going to Costco and I'm buying flautas from Costco. Was it San Miguel's or whatever it is? I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm paying like 12 bucks because 12 bucks is a lot less time for me. And I'll be nice about it. Like, I'll take them out of the wrapper and I'll put them in like... uh, Just get a bunch of hard shell taco things and buy a bunch of ground beef. It's like 10 bucks. Hard shell tacos are like two bucks probably for like a pack of 30. Boom. That's what I'm saying though. That's hella white Mexican food. What Mexican is really just bringing like some ground beef and hard shell tacos? No, nah, it's usually the host that does that. <laughs> they have like, all that shit ton of ground beef. Yeah, you've been to my house when I've made tacos for whatever randomly thing we're doing. Tacos is a good way of doing it, but you just tell people well, the type of food you want to have and you bring it. In my office party, we did that. We decided to do a potluck and they decided that they want to do a taco kind of a setup. So people chose to bring in turkey meat because fucking California. And then other people decided to bring ground beef and, and meat over from Thanksgiving. Oh, probably for sure. <laughs> Just sitting in the fridge like, fuck it. I got, I got time. I got time. And so my white ass, I'm like, well, that sounds good. But nachos, nachos sound way oh, better. Dude. So that's what I did. Instead of bringing in, I, I still signed up for stupid shit. Big like ass fucking bag of chips. How much is that? Like six bucks at Costco? No. And big ass cans. Like, well, I didn't go to Costco. Bucks. I went to the Smart and Final, and for a four pound bag of chips, it was like four bucks, like a dollar a pound. And then right across from the chips was a vat o cheese. A what? 
like the big ass can of nacho cheese. Well, you said, what's the word? You said a vat? A vat. Uh, a vat. A vat. V-A-T? Yeah. Like the, like the animal? There's an animal called a vat? Yes. What do you think? There's a, there's a, there's a bat. Wow, what's a vat? <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to Google, Google <laughs> this shit. I'm going to Google this shit. I was like, wasn't there? A vat. Like a big container. Like an industrial size deal. And since Smart and Final is like the epitome of snack shack supplies, it cost six Why bucks for a giant vat? can of cheese. I don't know what the fuck a vat animal is. I that, that's beyond me. Did you Google it? And nothing popped up. Nothing popped up. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, an animal. So I got, I signed up for the things that were left. I signed up for olives and jalapenos, which again, you look like an asshole. When you show up with a jar of olives and a jar of jalapenos and you put them down because someone spent like 30 minutes cooking like taco meat. <laughs> someone spent some time. There's some other shit. I'm like, Tommy grew those motherfuckers <laughs> and you put them in the jar. These are hand picked by somebody. It just wasn't me, but I, they didn't have what I wanted. So I got what they wanted and I got what I wanted. I don't know the size of this. But it's it's easily like a foot, foot and a half tall, and big. It's about as round as my head. It's a big head if you haven't seen it yet. Bill dome. And uh, that can of cheese, two thirds of that can of cheese was gone by the time lunch was out. And there's only eighteen people in my office. That's a lot of fucking cheese. People love cheese, man. No one it's not, even, it's not even real cheese, but it's the best cheese for nachos, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. It, it, it worked well. In, cheese or no cheese. There was no one taking a shit that day, for sure. Like, they're clogged up. For sure. <laughs> you haven't seen me eat cheese. But yeah, it was... That is how you properly do a bullshit potluck. There is a theme. You stick with the theme. If you don't like what's on the theme, you, you pivot. But you stay kind of consistent. Now, I've been to a few of them where they're like, okay, well, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I don't want to do any of that. I physically don't want to put out that kind of effort. So I'll buy some shit that's pre-done. Like Costco's like pre-done aisles shit. I'll buy that shit all day and put it out there. Or if I don't want to be in charge of actually cooking something for an entree, I'm just going to bring dessert. And by me bringing dessert, I'm going to like Rayleigh's or Bel Air. I'm getting those like big ass M&M cookies because they're fucking delicious. Or like I did for this one, I bought like the sugar cookies with the sprinkles and shit on there. Those are bomb. And again, for four bucks, I didn't have to turn on my oven. I had to do a goddamn thing. I think for my office potluck, I was out through and through for maybe 20 bucks because I want nachos and the vat of cheese and the giant four pound bag of chips but the other people that were there brought an onion a tomato and put them in the fridge and goes well i brought these fuck i hope someone else is gonna cut them because i'm not even gonna use them put them in the fridge another guy brings and i use the word brings lightly because i think they're already there plates that we already have in the office and said he signed up for those because no one else is going to bring them well, motherfucker, we already have enough for our office and for guests, so why would we bring them? He then proceeded to eat everything and then complain about everything. That's a foul. That's fucked up. And social faux pas. <laughs> now you're trying to be all fancy with big words. Faux pas. I took three years of French, man. I could say that. <laughs> why the fuck would you take three years of French? I don't know. I made sure I didn't have to do it in college. But you're Mexican. I already knew Spanish. That would be the easy A. No way, it's pro more proper Spanish. It's not like Mexican slang Spanish. It's, it's like Spaniard Spanish, which is completely... And all the Mexican kids that took in my school <laughs> fucking failed it. It's not like fucking idiots. <laughs> oh, it's Cheech and Chong. Mexicans go to night school, take Spanish, and get a B. No, they got <laughs> Ds, man. <laughs> like, they fucking they fucked up. Fucking A. Like, everyone's like, Spanish is so fucking hard. Like, don't you speak Spanish? Yeah, but they don't and write like, Spanish. Like, That's where you get at too. Like it's the pronunciations, and the the, the grammar is different. Yeah, yeah. The like, past participles, the past past. Yeah, you be super proper. Like everything is 
Yeah, we only took Spanish in high school because they taught us how to read and write Spanish when we were younger. Like we were take like, read and writing in Spanish it was Mexico Spanish, not Spanish. We didn't Spanish. learn shit in my white ass neighborhood. But when the very petite, white, blonde haired early twenties teacher came to teach Spanish in high school, everybody took Spanish. I don't even remember her name. I wasn't even good at Spanish. But I took that class. Two years of it, actually. I made better friends with a German teacher spent, who shared the room with her and then gave me an A for zero-period art that I didn't do than I did in actually learning Spanish. I have no clue. I couldn't tell you at all what was learned in that. I, I spent six months in a kitchen and I learned Spanish there because I was the only white guy in there. Other than that, waste of my time. Yeah, I've kind of lost most of my French. I haven't practiced it in fucking years. Well, you did... Break your pinky by showing up your butthole, so I mean, that's still kind of French. <laughs> Not to yourself, that's awkward. You like the, I'll make eye contact. You like the guy in a uh, scary movie. Smell my finger. What's it? My ass. <laughs> we just watched those movies. Those in the Fridays, they're all on Netflix. It was dope. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a now a dollar. Hulu member. They had that Black Friday deal, so 12 bucks for the year. I was going to call it Friday. Friday. <laughs> for you people. Yeah. We don't call it like White Mondays. It's because white people go to work. I'm like some so Black so Friday so people. I don't call it Cyber Monday. I don't even Cyber Monday anymore. Fucking everything's on sale all the time. Oh, online. yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I've worked retail before and everything's on sale all the fucking time. The yeah, deal it, we had on fucking Black Friday was the same deal we had a week before. Yeah. And this week before, it starts like... It starts like as soon as Halloween passes. Sometimes even before that. And it goes all the way until January. Yeah, it continues through and through. And then it becomes a Super Bowl sale. And that kind of shit that goes through for stuff. And then if you do like I do. And if you buy things on Amazon. Or you window shop on Amazon. I put a bunch of things like in my cart for save for later. Because I'm not actually ready to pull the trigger on them. Like, I kind of want it. But I don't really need it. So it's kind of like one of those things. And I'll wait on it. And you get like emails. From Amazon about things in your cart or on your lists. And it tells you when the price fluctuates down. They never they never send the email of, hey, you know that glass dildo you're looking at on Amazon? The price has gone up four cents. It's not like it's went down ten percent. That's, that's three cents. Like what do you mean ten percent? Just say it went down three cents. But if you watch things that are in your cart, if you know like the price of them, as Christmas and Cyber Mondays and Black Fridays, as all those kind of come along, the prices creep up. And then Cyber Monday deal, and it's at the same price it was like a week or two ago. Sometimes it's even more expensive on the actual Cyber Monday deal than it was two weeks ago. Because they kept raising the prices up to bring it back down and show it was a sale. Gotta love marketing. It's, it's a brilliant ploy. And just, yeah, it it's marketing. It's what you do. But in terms of doing the holiday parties, doing the Amazon shopping for the white elephants and things of that nature, we've had enough people enough times that when we have a white elephant gift exchange, we thought it was pretty universal that you don't bring shit. And that apparently was not common Uh, to you, Russell. Wait, what? Don't bring shit. Yeah, don't bring shit. For a white elephant gift exchange, in your mind, what does that mean to you? You bring a gift that you keep secret and everybody exchange. Like, yeah, you want to just go through. I can explain what a white elephant is. And Everyone brings a gift and you guys take turns picking a gift. And you're, After the first person picks a gift, the next person can steal that gift or they can, you know... You know how one goes. Well, yeah, I do. But now, if there is a $25 price max for the gifts, does that mean you go to Goodwill and you buy a used handicapped toilet seat booster and bring that as a gift? If you're my friend Steven, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, we need to get some dope stuff. He bought like a Zombo doll. What the fuck's a Zombo doll? It's like a racist black doll thing. He bought one of those. It was like five bucks. Then he bought a shake weight. That was three, three bucks. So he bought like a bunch of random shit. He's like, whoever gets like, he's going to get a bunch of random fucking things. It was like, oh, uh, he'd be out of my house. But we <laughs> fucking people, man. Now, if you're going to have some racist shit out of it, get like, if I remember correctly, if it's the doll, the same thing as I'm thinking of it is, it Ooh, was, an, doll. yeah, it's an old school, I want to say it's almost like in the 50s. It's like a black faced doll. Yeah, and it was not only a doll, it was also a TV show and a restaurant. No, uh, my friend who got the, <laughs> he got the gift, his grandma or some shit owns the Samo restaurant here in Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> And he has this fucking racist dog. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, that's full circle. That's so, full yeah, circle. so he owns this shop. Okay, so. <laughs> but see, if that guy's in the group, that's a funny thing to do. <laughs> if that guy's not part of the group, then you're just an asshole. I mean, we've had people that brought a handicapped toilet seat booster. What? Who the fuck is handicapped there? No There's one. The handicapped guy there, he might be super juiced about it. Uh, juice and handicap ass seats are not the, the things that we should be going together with. Use your white slang book you just fucking bought on Amazon. <laughs> your fillet is straight off the chain, yo. What the fuck? For those of you who didn't see this or hear about it yet, we'll put some uh, pictures up of this on uh, social media, on Instagram and on Facebook and MySpace as well. Um, I got a random package delivered to me. I'm laughing at <laughs> the slang book. <laughs> I got I ordered some things off Amazon that I, I legitimately did order for myself and for life me I can't remember what I ordered but I also got a second package in the mail and it was with my name and address on it and inside the package were two sets of some wine infused they say aerator, but they're, they're not really aerators. They're just wine pours. So I got like four wine pours that plug into a bottle. It, it, it extends the wine over the glass. There's nothing special about it. And people that buy them are fucking douchey. There's no point for it. But in that same package was a deck of 50 used slang flashcards. And it is a white couple, or as I like to say, the white couple. With a white waiter looking at a menu in this fine dining restaurant because the waiter's got a bow tie on and shit. And it says, quote, the filet is straight off the chain tonight. Russell lost his shit when he saw this. <laughs> My white people slang cards. Why? <laughs> well, first off. What corny ass motherfuckers is buying these? Who, who bought it once is one thing. But they sold it back to Amazon, and someone bought it again. Slightly cheaper, dude. You know, college kids broke. Got to get the used books. Got to get used cards, man. That, that's like something you think of your grandparents, like your parents would want to have to like learn to see like slang. Or, I, I don't even know. Just, it's my, fucking stupid. My it, parents are both ethnic, so they wouldn't need those. <laughs> ethnic? You mean ignorant? Nah. <laughs> Bonics. Bonics. My hotel tell me everything. But that's funny. I, if those flashcards make it to our white elephant party this weekend, I still think it's funny. Yeah. That's a funny thing to do with. If that's the only thing that's in there, I'd be pissed. Like, that's not a funny gift by itself. That With other things, that, that can be a funny thing for it. And I understand how that works and how that's going to go and play out. But a used handicap toilet seat booster is not a fun thing. A used foldable walker, not funny either. A shitty painting from Goodwill that you spent $2 on, also not a good offer, not a good gift, especially when other people will put like a shitty mug from Goodwill, but a $25 gift card inside the mug. That's how you pair that up. Or when you have people giving you, what do we have? One of our friends brought a edible sex chocolates so you paint them on your significant other and then you eat the chocolate off 
personally, I don't want to clean up after that. <laughs> just sounds like a fucking mess. Like that, you want to put it on like the ass and just pretend like it's poop. <laughs> <laughs> So the kids are doing these days, I bet. I, I, I don't doubt it. They're probably first Not putting doing the Purell in their eyes, and then they put the vodka tampon in, and then lick the chocolate off the ass, followed up by an ass shot. It's called the Dirty Shirley. Really? What can I know? Probably is now. No, it's not. I've seen some pretty wild videos. Oh, I don't doubt it. But yeah, that, that to me, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'm not cleaning up after that. Like that, that doesn't sound like it'd be fun to clean up after because oh. first off you do some weird shit and you're probably gonna get drunk before you're doing weird shit they're like on a mattress too yeah that's what I'm, and you gotta clean your sheets and your comforter and have you ever tried to wash your comforter it doesn't dry out all at the same time so now you gotta change everything now you're sobering up after you've done all this now you're sticky there might be ants in your ass crack <laughs> 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 That would suck. Yeah. <laughs> so we go covered in ants. <laughs> They're biting my balls. <laughs> my sister would have such bad PTSD from that. She fucking <laughs> she got attacked by ants when she was like eight. Like they were in like a pick basket. She sat next to it in the car, and <laughs> they just like started biting her ass in Louisiana. Like those red fire ants too. Oh, she got ants in her pants. I thought that only happened in cartoons, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently not. She lost the ability to speak. Her grammar went all weird. She's like, they're bidding me. They're bidding me. You mean biting? Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's how to correct someone. An eight-year-old getting bit by fire ants. I'd help you, but I don't know what bidding means, so I'm out. Like, you deal with that shit. Exactly. But, uh... Tough love. Tough love. No shit. Even though that's not something I would prefer, that's still a decent gift to bring. Like, that still makes sense, and it, it kind of throws people off. I think that was the year... That I bought and I stole back because I want it more than anyone else did. The uh, talking toilet paper holder. You know the one you can record the message on so every time you pull a square out, you record a new message <laughs> on there. <laughs> like, I'd have like, I'll see you. People thought that was kind of creepy. Which it was. And it still is. Still works. But it's better now than you a... get the ladies? <laughs> yeah, you just lock them in the bathroom and wait till they pass out. Yeah. yeah works but that's still better than the used bullshit stuff we get and it's it's stupid to have to explain that to people that you can't do that you can't bring shit we stopped inviting those people now i think my favorite gift that was given that could have been something else was probably the anal beads were you there for that one no, no. I've been the one where, where this chick wanted a dildo. <laughs> Dildos are kind of expensive. Yeah, they are. They're not cheap. <laughs> Who the fuck bought a dildo? Oh, maybe it was a used one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the best thing is someone brought a gift with anal beads with a retrieval ring. Because they might get lost, you have to fish them out, so I got a retrieval ring. Now, the funnier part to the whole story on that one is, if I remember correctly, they bought porn and the anal beads, and then adamandeve.com, that wasn't a plug, they're just who they are, also threw in, like, penis enlarging cream. So, to me... That's a great deal. Well, sure. I mean, if you need penis <laughs> and cream, sure. That's fucking great. But, uh, that wasn't in the gift. Like, you got free penis and cream. You don't think, you t- when you tell people what you're bringing, you put that in the gift too? With the anal beads? I'm looking around and I'm like, Where, where's that cream? Where's the cream? Oh shit, you kept the cream. Oh. That's funny. So you like jerk off with it? <laughs> Your dick just gross? <laughs> Beat my meat till it's gross. You just hope it's like fucking Pinocchio. Exercising your dick. <laughs> dude, that'd, dude, that'd be a pain in the ass. Imagine if your dick just grew longer every time you jerked off. So like everybody would know how many times you jerked off to on the length of your dick. <laughs> Every guy's just dragging their dick behind them. For miles. <laughs> 
Imagine if it was the opposite of females doing it. Imagine the lips going down past the knees oh, and slapping yes. around. <laughs> Fucking screen doors and hurricanes there. I made it gross. Be good for the wintertime. Just wraps her legs in them. <laughs> <laughs> Natural leggings. <laughs> oh, that's... Keep him nice and hydrated. You made the women that are listening. That's probably only one. So the woman that's listening with a giant vagina. Very angry. I'm going to get hate mail. Tuck it in, Grandma. Tuck it in. Like a salami forest down there. That makes it sound like a gay bar. Salami forest. Salami. Oh, a bologna still forest. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> roast beef curtains. Yeah, roast beef. Yeah. Some beat up ones. Yeah, I think. I was thinking about flaps of meat. Yeah, I, <laughs> flaps of meat. I think if you oh, the pizza size. if you lay slices, <laughs> flaps of meat. <laughs> Shit. If you label something a salami forest, I'm thinking of like the dried salami. Oh, you think? Yeah, you probably think about dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Son I was thinking pizza and pizza slices like slapping meat. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm thinking like mini pepperonis, no slice, yeah. but you were for the full on kielbasa. That's not the same thing. I was asked for that shit. We never had it. That's slang. That's so you hook up with a kielbasa and you show up. Wait, what? Did you never. Kielbasa? S- kielbasa. You know what kielbasa is? Is that a different pepperoni? It's not pepperoni. It's just like a big meats. <laughs> you ever seen like the. Was it Hillshire Farm? It's like an oval in a package. Kielbasa? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought I was like, no, some other, some people ask for some weird fucking pepperonis and shit. Like, like sound like kielbasa or other stupid shit like that. Well, not stupid. Because no. it's like a, it's a thing. And it's like, we're not that Italian. See, I, I was more insinuating. It was like the 80s movie Lover Boy, which I guarantee you've never seen. Yeah. And it's... Uh, Young Patrick Dempsey. I don't know who that is either. Uh, he is was the guy, the co-star on Grey's Anatomy, the doctor. That one said McLovin or whatever, not McLovin, not McSomething. Grey's Anatomy. McLovin's totally never seen one. it, but my sister has a tattoo from that show, and she's stupid. First off, what does your sister have tattooed on her from Grey's Anatomy? Second off, where's the tattoo? Tattoos on her left shoulder blade he said if only love were enough and I was like you're watching Grey's Anatomy and some motherfucker said if only love were enough you're like oh I'm gonna get that on my body that's a stupid reason to get a fucking tattoo <laughs> <laughs> you fucking that's your family I love it uh, but um she's the youngest one yeah. young and dumb yeah full of cum gross <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Dempsey is on summer vacation at home at a Mexican pizza delivery company. And every time a woman orders... Mexican owned or like to make Mexican style pizzas? It was white people for sure, but they had to wear sombreros and a mustache. No, maybe it was actually Italian. Maybe it was Luigi's. Was it regular pizza? Or is it Mexican style pizza? I'm honestly thinking it could have been an Italian one. I don't know. In my head... It's like a sombrero and a big mustache and like a poncho kind of thing going on. But it could have been a green vest. It could have been Luigi's. It could have been... I don't know. Either way, the point is the fact that anytime the woman ordered a pizza with extra anchovies, it means you were getting laid. Oh, whoa. Yeah. And it's like uh, late 80s, early 90s. And I'm like... So like the pizza boy show up with his dick in the box? Wouldn't have to. Just shows up and she just grabs the dick out. That's all it was. So it was a cool movie to learn of back in the day as a kid, but... That was a little off. T- I don't even know where the fuck we got from that one from. But yeah. <laughs> so, in terms of getting back to gift giving for like white elephant parties, that's how we got there. It was the uh, penis growing cream. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. I did it by Why myself. Is the penis growing cream instead of beating your meat and dragging it all from my house. We digress. Uh, I'm glad I connected those dots. All right, so you're pissed off at the penis cream. The penis what happened? No, I wasn't pissed off at That would have been funny to go in the present. It's funny that it didn't make it in the present. <laughs> <laughs> like, Look, who needs something? Like, who, who tells you this came for free and then they didn't put it in the package? Like, that was the best thing to give them. 
Like, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. And then, um... What if it's a chick? Huh? What's she gonna do with it? It wasn't a chick. No, like, that got the that got the penis cream, though. She ended up with it. Well, he kept the penis cream and then put it in the, pa- in the gift. So, he got yeah. it. That's what I'm saying. And anal beads went to another dude, too. Which is pretty funny. He actually stole them. Which is questionable. Do you. You do you, bro. Hey, you well, let re- her do you. Maybe he went to re-gift it at a white elephant. I think he said he was going to actually re-gift it at his family's white elephant Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty funny. I had a roommate who ended up with two copies of... What the fuck is it? Oregon Trail, the card game from two separate <laughs> white elephant parties. <laughs> oh, that's great. He threw them in along with another gift at a separate white elephant, his third oh. white elephant party. It's like, if I end up with these motherfuckers back. <laughs> so. Well, see, and we had, you were here for last year's party, weren't you? Yeah, you yeah, were. Yeah. You, you got the whole like groping people thing down last year. Um, First of all, she came to me. <laughs> I'm not just out here grabbing women by the pussy. Yes, she was. <laughs> she said, do you want to feel? And I was like, yeah. I guarantee you she did not say, do yes, you want to feel? Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. There was a witness and she was there. And she's like, that's not what she meant by feel, but okay. Uh, that's why Russell can't go to elementary schools, by the way, people. Elementary schools don't have tits. Their moms do. Send me to the elementary schools. <laughs> <laughs> but even for our last one, we didn't have any like bad gifts. It was actually a pretty good thing. And I don't mind joking gifts. That are good gifts to kind of go with. Those crack me up. But someone brought fucking edibles. Yeah. Like there was edibles at the party and we were all trying to figure out who was doing what and where. And by the time it was all done, it was just like, okay, where'd the edibles go? Oh, someone ate them. And then people were having fun. Yeah. They, they got eight at the party. Oh, fuck. Yeah. But I, they were bought from someone local here because they were bagged up from somewhere. So they are bagged up, labeled, and properly done. So now that it's fully legal everywhere, I'm sure we'll have some more edibles this year or some CBD oils or anything to that extent. And if you are looking to get some CBD oils... Or some vape pen uh, refills, you can actually go to thehermanjames.com, check out the products tab at the top, and you will actually see that I've got some Cheech Marin CBD oil on the website. You can pick it up. There's a special offer on there right now as well. So check out thehermanjames.com. Get you guys uh, white elephant presents or just get some stuff for yourself. If you you like me and you got to go to your family, you should probably be heavily medicated. It'll help. Or you just don't care. It works too. But, uh, yeah, so when it comes to the idea of the gift giving, I think if you're going to bring a shitty gift, you shouldn't be able to come out with something better than what you brought in terms of used toilets. You, you bring something like that, like, I'm going to nix your gift that you win. I like, you're done. And then... The rules that go along with the gift giving and the white elephant things. We stupidly didn't always let the first person re go again at the end because eventually the first person doesn't get to choose or steal again and you get fucked. So you've yeah. got like the gift you have from the beginning that no one ever wanted. He had no option to get rid of it. So now we do the whole first person gets to be the last person to steal if they want it. And apparently that's a normal way that everyone else does it where you just didn't know. Yeah, you never... Really? Yeah. Wow. Because... I never noticed. I haven't seen drunk. Yeah, and well, most of us are, but it was also because most of the time, the gifts, except for a few times, were gifts and people are stealing gifts from each other and trying to get back things and people even brought things that they wanted and they were stealing back from other people because well that gift is better than whatever you got over there and i thought people were going to try to one-up me and, and they didn't this year my gift i think is actually pretty cool i think it's kind of stupid and gimmicky uh, but i actually like it a lot so if i end up with it i wouldn't be mad 
probably would never use it or keep it for anything, but I think it's pretty cool, and I'll enjoy doing it and being there for it. But we've also got this year the kegerator that I gotta see if we can wheel into the tile room. I don't, I don't think she's gonna want me to do that, but I could probably just sneak in there anyway. I just, I don't want to have to have people walking through my house to the garage. Yeah. Past like, the car and stuff. Past the car. A 40 year old car in the garage and people drinking is not a good combination. Not at all. So if. Wearing jeans. Yeah. Even at the very least, if I. Because it's not supposed to rain, I don't think. Uh, even if I pull the keg grater into the backyard and put it right out to the door, that works too. Yeah. Because if it pops or whatever. Like, right there. Yeah. It's still in the same area versus everyone coming coming back here. Fortunately, it's got wheels. We're okay. But the rules and the etiquette of how you do things and how you go to social events and you deal with yourself and your coworkers at company parties, I think, I think that's... Unfortunately, it's, it's not common to have common sense and common etiquette. Like, I went to our friend's kid's birthday. Now, I believe they're Laotian, not Billy Ocean, Laotian. Okay. That's a landlocked country in Southeast Asia. Thank you, King of the Hill. You never saw Bobby Hill, did you? No, that was a good show. Bobby Hill? Yeah, King of the Hill. Bobby Hill was the... I saw King of the Hill. Yeah. Damn it, Bobby. I never watched it religiously, but it came on a bunch of adults and I liked it. I like Mike Judge's work. I, it was good. I liked it. It was a fun show to watch. But our, our friend's wife and his kid and, of course, the whole side of the family, they're Laotian. And the mom cooked a fuck ton of bomb food. Fantastic food. And then his wife said to take food home with you. And so we did like every other white person does. And we're like, no, 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 no. It, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I don't really want to because we don't want to make a plate of food. And cover and foil and like t- it just it a it looks tacky and b now you got a plate of food sitting in your car like what the fuck you do with a plate of food sitting in your car well she went up to us knowing that they had so much food that her mom made by herself it basically was like catered food and she brought out Dollar Tree Tupperware like she bought like the four packs of to go Tupperware and started handing them out to people it's like this is not like a white person party like take the fucking food we're not taking it home. <laughs> Like, that was bomb. That was bomb food. Now, that's different than how you do white people parties. I gotta say white people parties because I don't fucking know how black people do their parties and Mexicans typically have like... food. And well, it's like, take a play at the end I could just so much damn food. Like, ridiculous amounts. My cousin, my cousin just had his baby shower. All you can eat tacos is plates after plates of tacos. I couldn't eat no more tacos, man. It was... And he's like, take some tacos with you. I'm like, I'm not taking tacos with me, man. I, I should have took some tacos with me, though. Uh, see? There you go. Okay. And see, the only reference I have to like black barbecues is uh, Boys in the Hood. That's it. That's all I know. Because they had the barbecue. Don't be a menace. I did see Don't be a menace, <laughs> but I'm not going to Don't be a menace. <laughs> uh, you never saw a Tyler Perry movie? Yeah, I'm a white. Of course, I've seen Tyler Perry movies. What about uh, Johnson Family Vacation? No. We just talked about that in that text. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. You think it was the Griswolds for the National Lampoons? It was not. Black people trying to sell a white culture. Century Center Trainer is awesome. <laughs> but when you come to potlucks, you come to parties, people's houses, typically. The food is left because if you leave early, there's still people there. What are people still eating food? Like that's the whole point is you're chipping in what you brought so you can eat what other people have brought. You are bringing alcohol so you can drink what other people have brought. It is something that is done because that's a social norm. And it is typically customary. The leftovers or whatever is going to be there stays for the host because they clean up before, during, and after you're being there. They've also housed everyone in the entire fuckery of an event. 
And that's kind of like your thank you to them is here's some shitty leftover nachos. Eat them or don't. Here's the remainder of a fifth of gin that no one drinks. And I didn't drink it either, but I brought over a fifth of gin because it was on sale at Safeway for like six bucks. But I'm going to come drink all your vodka, which happens more than I'd actually like to admit. But we have... What you saw the liquor cabinet? What I think we have like two handles of gin in there. Yeah, that is <laughs> gross. Like we've got beef eaters gin and we've got tangere. I can honestly say if I had a fifth of gin in my liquor cabinet now, it will be there until I die. It's just not something I would drink. Handle of Crown Royal, that's typically gone in like a month because we all drink it. That's something that is a social thing for us all to have. Hell. After we did the uh, whiskey and vodka uh, tasting a few episodes ago, yeah, I put that handle that like was it sixteen dollar handle of Jim Beam at Costco. I put it over at her house, so when we go over to her house, <laughs> I have whiskey there that I don't have to worry about bringing with me. Sweet. So it's like okay, cool. I'm gonna place it over here, but it's stuff like that you do, and, I, and because she's housing it. If she has people over, she has the free right to give it to whoever shows up because she's housing it. Yeah. I have no right to that. Like, fuck it. It is what it is. You do you. But that's what I'm saying. That's a social norm. Now, you come to my holiday party. You come in late and you don't bring anything to share. You eat things and then ask for a plate to go. You're a fuck boy. Yeah. Like, what, what are you doing? You show up with the fucking... It's like, hey, I brought a jug of water. <laughs> Dude, we still have a fucking six-pack of Coors Light in my recycle room. I looked at the dates on that. I think some of them are like 2012s. Jesus. that That's how long ago this was happening. It's like a six-pack of Coors Light. And we had a summer party and a barbecue. It's probably my party, actually, for my birthday. And you've never been to my house where I've ever bought Coors Light or Bud Light or MGD. It's never been anything I've bought. MGD. Oh, Miller Genuine Draft. Draft. Yeah. And so the cheapest I go is Corona. It is Mexican piss water. But it's still better, in my opinion. Yeah, you like that? It's still better, in my opinion, than Coors Light, Bud Light. And actually, I like MGD more than I like those two. But on a regular basis, I've had PBR. When I've had Miller, uh, Miller, uh, Bud or Coors, PBR, I think is pretty good actually, and they're actually Russian now. You know that, right? Really? Yeah. Uh, a Russian company. Slapped to the face. Five years ago. Yeah, about five years ago, bought PBR, and I think Schlitz malt liquor. Yeah, I never had that stuff. Looked like shit. Yeah, I've never had that either. But I did play Edward Forty Hands. With Schlitz? Fuck no. I played with Mickey's and I played with um, I didn't Old do English. I did with Old English a few times. Oh, and King Cobras. Oh, yeah, King Cobras. King Cobras. Favorite. I was really good at King Cobras. <laughs> I could chug that stuff easily. Yeah, King Cobras I've done it with. Um, Old English I've done it with. Uh, I Mickey Hand Grenades, I, I don't want to fuck with that. They're okay. I played uh, some beer punk with Mickey Hand Grenades. Oh, yeah, the Hand Grenades. I, I like to make brass monkeys from those. No, that's not how you make a brass monkey. It's a 211 and fucking orange juice. Not the brass monkey. Oh, these need malt liquor. Steel Reserve 211, specifically, and orange juice. It's malt liquor, man. <laughs> it's a ghetto man mimosa. It's a ghetto man mimosa. No, that's a uh, slurricane. No, slurricane is a fucking liqueur, and that shit is gross. <laughs> it's gross. Jim brought that, that once. That's fucking disgusting. He brought that because it was it had just come out. And it, it wasn't a party. He just brought it over to bring it over. And we had it at the old house. And that shit sat there for like a year and a half. Like, we're just trying to get people to drink it. Yeah, nope. I it, like E40, but fuck you, E40. Yeah, that was... <laughs> what the hell are you You doing? know that fool's still making money on that. Oh, Slurricane and shit. Fuck, like, yeah, he is. And he's got the rosé wine and shit. Like, that fool's... He's doing fine. Yeah, he's doing well. Black people are stupid. They buy all E40 shit all the time. I believe it or not, dude. It's largely marketed towards white folks. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> white folks want to be black. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, white people are stupid. Well, you know what? It's just, I'm going to cover all bases here. The general public is pretty fucking dumb. Oh, yeah. It, it Just common sense isn't there anymore. 
the standard of intelligence has dropped. Uh, conversational skills have been lacking. And those who are listening to me tell me I'm a fucking idiot right now. You're yelling at the radio. Good for you. You defend that. Tell me what you really think. Hit me up on uh, Instagram. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, Herman's Rant is what I'm under for uh, Twitter. So hit me up on that. You can also find me at uh, the No Funny Podcast Network for uh, nofunnynetwork.com. I'm all over the place. You'll see me everywhere. Yeah, and his address is... <laughs> addresses, motherfuckers. <laughs> Just beep it up. <laughs> Just see what you got. You see can tell everybody to come see you on the internet. The internet tough. <laughs> Catch me outside. I'm Joe Pesci strong. Hell strong. But yeah, it's it just gets weird about stuff, and and with this time of the year in particular, when it comes to everyone's being at parties and events and get-togethers and shit, it's even funnier that I can say this shit here right now, and if I go to an event, I can't say this shit because it's not politically correct. Yet you go to that same event and you're looking at someone that's like. Posted everything on social media about being like alt left or alt right, but in the general public, they're prim and proper and they're being nice and this and that. And you like click on like their Instagram or their Twitter, and as they've been at the party with you, they've already dropped like 14 MAGAs, Make America Great Agains, and all this bullshit about like building a wall and fucking immigrants, this and that. Meanwhile, you're doing shots. With a Mexican. Like, really? I thought you hate Mexicans. Why are you drinking tequila with a Mexican? It, it's not one of those social norms I don't understand. You can hide behind the internet and anonymity of the internet, but when you're in a social event with these people, don't bring it up. Because apparently you're going you're gonna to offend the offenders. That's stupid. But... Start to finish from a party. If you're going to an event this year, this holiday season, this whatever, or if you're not popular enough to get onto it, just go to a swingers website, man. I don't even know what they are, but I'm sure you type in swingers website. No, they can't. What do you mean? You got to be, guys can't go. You got to be a guy and a girl, a couple, or you got to, you can't. Guys can't show up by themselves. Girls can show up by themselves. Guys got to bring a girl. That's fucking sexist. Very sexist, <laughs> but also keeps a lot of fucking creeps out. I bet. This <laughs> fucker's trying to. You know, but no, you got to bring a girl, or girls can show up by themselves. Like, yeah. What the fuck? I thought this was like the age of like fucking equal rights and shit. Black lives matter. Single guys matter. I don't think black people go to. Ah, I like fuck you. I bet you they do. <laughs> I don't know man every time I've never heard no black swingers uh, unless they swing dancing you know what I'm saying fuck those no there's no <laughs> one black man swing dancing that's not happening they're the guys playing in the band they're the guys that can actually do that shit because no one else can but I guarantee you you can I guarantee you even here in Sacramento there's gotta be some like sex club swinger bullshit deal you can get into as a single dude And I I don't think a house event you'd be welcomed at off the bat, but there's got to be some sort of like swingers events that you can go to that are open to the general public that maybe you got to get sponsored by someone. I don't know. Does that like work? Like you're like a foreign exchange student or something like that? It's uh, it's probably like erotic speed dating, maybe. (laughs) Where people just show up, fucking run? Is that a thing? You mean like erotic speed coming? Erotic like speed premature speed ejaculation? Fucking, <laughs> I don't know. Is that a thing? I, it might be a thing. Who knows? If not, we're fucking, we're trademarking that shit. We're doing it. Erotic speed dating? Yeah. Hey, you, you fucking, you meet up, you the fuck or you don't. If not, you go to the next one, you fuck <laughs> yeah. or you don't. Just keep going. Hey, dude, this could be a thing. I'm just saying, yeah, see? I mean, some people just want to fucking, nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's Masquerade what. Masquerade ball that shit. Put on those little masks so you don't really recognize each other. Get butt naked, like trying to fuck or not nope on to the next one that's all fun and dating until you find your cousin oh (laughs) damn good thing you gotta the white folks know what the cousins look like naked all the time that a racist thing yeah rednecks rednecks they say in Alabama though row tide but yeah there's gotta be a a thing you get to for that if you're gonna go to an event 
understand the minimal ideas of properness. If you're gonna go to an event or you're gonna go to a party or whatever, it's work related, it's in your free time with your friends or family, you shouldn't be the fucktard that wants to break the fucking rules because you're too cheap or you're too dumb to do the right fucking thing. Know the rules that you should already know and inherently have brought into your brain. You contribute to the event. You bring food or you bring booze or you bring both. You also bring the gift for a gift exchange or for the white elephant. You don't bring fucked up things. You don't bring cheap shit. If you're bringing things that you're going to re-gift, you double down on that gift. You make it bigger, better, and more expensive than the other ones because you didn't pay a fucking thing for it. So throw everything into that to get everything's worth out of it. If you are bringing things to the event like you should be, you don't have the right to take them back with you. You can't bring your appetizers, your entrees, your booze back home with you because they weren't finished while you're there. You wanna bring your plates, your bowls, your cups back home with you? Fine, that's great. You put them onto something else. If you really have to take them there and you have to be a fucking asshole and you can't leave them till the end or get them at some other time, do that. You do not get to bring food and then take food back. You don't get to bring booze take booze back. And if you're bringing booze, you don't get to bring shit booze. You can't bring Coors Light and then come and drink craft beer. You can't bring pop-off fucking vodka and drink everyone's Grey Goose. You want to bring an equivalent for what you're going to do. If you're bringing shit booze because that's what you drink, great. You drink that shit booze. You eat that shit food. You don't take the good stuff because you brought the shitty stuff. That's not how this is played because trust me, you won't be invited back. You will be talked about and you will be hated on for the rest of time. You will be that person that brought the used shit seat booster that no one wants to invite to any events. No one's going to have you be brought to anything because you're the person that brings the shitty gifts. You're the person that no one wants to invite to the parties. No one wants there in the first place. Don't be that person. Know the right thing to do. Make the right move. And don't fuck it up for everybody else. Well, that's all the time I've got for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. Don't forget to uh, send a review and like and subscribe on iTunes. I'm also on Spotify. We are all over the platforms for any of the podcast locations. Don't forget to check out thehermanjames.com. There are some good products, deals, and specials for anyone for the holiday season, whether you're doing Hanukkah, just finished today or you're doing Christmas or Kwanzaa or you're waiting to get things at cheap for every other sale for it check out the products tab a few good items you'll find on there especially if you're looking at some new equipment for podcasting everything we use is going to be on there as well as some special deals from like I said the CBD oils to Blue Apron to everybody else you're looking at for on there great deals um, buy one get one free as well uh, I'd also like to thank Russell for coming in for us today, kind of tuning in and kind of chiming in on his uh, views, some ideas of what's going on in the world for us. And uh, don't forget to check all the great podcasts out at the No Funny Podcast Network. It's the No Funny Podcast Network.com. And don't forget to check out my friends on the East Coast, the Shots for Like podcast at shotsforlike.com. And I can't wait to be in your ears next week. Y'all have a great week and a happy holiday.